good day students. My name is Sidney Ase Emmanuel, and today we shall be looking at tools and machines. We're going to be considering the topic Woodwork Hand Tools 2. We have looked at Woodwork Hand Tools Part 1, and here we are for the Part 2 of it. Now, in this lesson, at the end of this lesson, we want to ensure that you, the student, you are able to identify sketch, describe, and use driving tools. And also to identify, sketch, describe, and use boring tools. And also to identify, sketch, describe, and state the use of common holding and supporting devices. And lastly, you should be able to identify, sketch, and use cutting and pairing tools. In the first lesson, we said for many years, humankind has been transforming wood from its natural state into all kinds of incredible things with the use of various hand tools. Now, these hand tools, we said, are very handy and easy to use. Now, in the first class, we also said that woodwork hand tools are hand tools that are used without electricity. And we also said that they are classified into four. Now, in the first class, we discussed measuring tools and setting and marking out tools. In today's class, we're going to be looking at driving tools, and then we'll look at boring and cutting tools. So first, let's discuss the driving tools. Now, what are these driving tools? The driving tools are used to drive in or drive out nails and other objects. We have some examples of driving tools which are hammers, screwdrivers, and then punches. Now let's look at them one after the other. First, we're going to look at the hammer. Now, the hammer is one of the most commonly used hand tools. It is used to drive in nails or drive out nails. Now, this hammer should be held firmly, okay? You grab the hammer firmly to ensure that while striking, it doesn't slip off your hand. If it slips off your hand, it can cause damages. So, we ensure that we hold the hammer firmly before using. And also, by gripping it firmly, it makes it easier for you to strike. Now, these are different types of hammers. Hammers are classified based on the kind of head types that they have. Okay, if you look at these hammers, they have different head structures. Okay, that's how we classify hammers. Now for this one, it is called ball pen head hammer. The next one is called claw hammer. This is like the most commonly used hammer by carpenters. Okay, it is called claw hammer. Use it to drive in nails and also if you look at this, this part, which is the claw part, used to drive out nails. And then the next one is called Warrington Hammer. The next one is called Straight Pen Head Hammer. The next one is called Cross Pen Head Hammer. Next, Blocking Head or Sledge Hammer. And then the next one is Planishing Head Hammer. And then the last one is called Mallet. This one has a rubber head. So hammers are classified based on the type of heads that they have. The next one is screwdriver. Screwdriver. Now, the screwdriver is a driving tool used to fix or remove screws with slotted heads. It consists of a metal and a handle. Now, screwdrivers are of different forms, shapes, and sizes. The screwdrivers that we have are of four types. We have the flat screwdriver, we have the star screwdriver, or can also be called Philip head screwdriver. We also have the offset screwdriver, and then lastly we have the Allen screwdriver, which can also be called the Allen key. So let's look at them one after the other. First, the star screwdriver. Star screwdriver is used for driving in or out screws with star heads. Take note of that. It is used to drive in or out screws that have star head. Now, this is a typical example 
of a star screwdriver. If you look at the head here, okay, it is shaped in form of a star. So if we have screws, for instance, that look like that, okay, it can fit in. It's like putting a square peg in a square hole. You don't put a square peg in a round hole. It would not fit in. So you will use the star screwdriver for screws that have star heads. And then the next one is the flat or straight screwdriver, which is that. It is used to drive in or out screws that have flat heads. Okay, I have a screw like that, the flat head, so it can fit in and easy to screw. The next one is the offset screwdriver. This is a typical example of the offset screwdriver. And we said that it's a screwdriver with blades at right angles at each end of its shaft. The next one is the Allen screwdriver, which can also be called the Allen key. That's it. The Allen screwdriver. It is used on screws with hexagonal or square slotted heads. Just like we discussed in the case of the star and the, the flat screwdriver. For the Allen key, it's the screws that have hexagonal heads, okay, that is six-sided heads, or a square head like that. So on one side, you see that it has the shape of an hexagon, and then on the other side, it also has the shape of a square. The next one is the punch. The punch is a driving tool that is hit with a hammer. Okay, mainly to create a hole or mark a point or remove damaged rivets, nails, bolts, and pins. Or can also be used to create impressions when designing. Now, that's a typical example of a punch. Okay, we hold it here and then we use the hammer to hit on this portion to achieve these several things that have been mentioned. Now, there are different types of punches. We have different types of punches used to achieve different purposes. Now, these are the purposes to create holes in metal sheets. There are some punches that are also used to mark points before drilling. There are some that are used to remove damaged rivets, nails, bolts, and pins. While there are other punches that are used to create impressions when making designs on a work piece. Now, the different types of punches that we have are as follows. The first one is the dot punch. Okay, the dot punch has a very sharp angle tip which allows it to create very deep and narrow points. It has a point ground to the angle of 40 degrees, this point, okay, it's shaped in a 40 degrees form. And the next one is the center punch. Now the center punch is used to mark the center of a point, okay, and it has a point ground to the angle of 60 to 90 degrees. The next one is the pin punch. That's the next example of the punch, the pin punch. Now, this punch is used to remove metal pins from holes. And then we have another one called the decorative punch, which is used to create an impression, patterns and images on metals, leather, and so on. Now, we'll move on to discuss the boring tools. Now, boring tools are used for marking holes in wood, okay? And we have different types of boring tools. We have six types, actually, of boring tools. The first one is the ratchet brace. The next one is the wheel brace. The next one is the bits. We have the twist drills. We have the bradal, and then we have the gimlet. Now, this is a typical example of the ratchet brace. You can see this diagram here. You see that the ratchet brace is used with the bits. Here, that's the bit. This portion is the bit. Okay, we fix it to the ratchet brace. You hold it with one hand and then twist it with 
the other hand. We use it to what? Mark holes in wood. And then this is a typical example of the wheel brace. Okay, it also serves the same purpose just like the ratchet brace. But in this case, it has a wheel, as you can see, it has a wheel here that you can what? Turn while marking holes in wood. Now the next one we're going to discuss is holding devices. We're going to look at holding devices. These are tools used to hold work pieces on a bench. Okay, we use them to hold work pieces on a bench. We have some examples of holding devices. We have the bench vise. Now, this bench vise is fixed to the side of the bench and then used for clamping wood in place before working on the wood. The next one is bench hook. Now, this is a tool used for holding jobs steadily and firmly while cutting, planning, or chiseling. As you can see the diagram, okay, this is the bench hook. We use it to hold what jobs steadily and firmly so that it doesn't shake while you're trying to cut, as you can see in the diagram, while you're trying to what, cut or chisel or plan any object. And it's a very useful tool for cutting or sewing wood accurately. Now the next one is the clamp. It's another example of a holding device. It is called the clamp. Now this tool is used to hold an object or objects firmly and tightly while working. These are some examples of clamps. We have the G clamp, as you can see, it's in form of a G. We have the sash clamp, and then we have the F clamp, which is in form of an F. So these are some examples of the clamp. The next one we're going to discuss is the cutting tool. Now the cutting tools are sharp edged tools used to change the shape or form of something by either sawing, chopping, and so on. Now the saw is a common cutting tool used to cut through materials, especially wood. Okay, we use the saw mostly for cutting wood. It has a blade and a wooden or metal head where we hold and then carry out the cutting. Now, with its blade, it cuts through the material as it is moved back and forth continuously. That's how we use the saw to cut the wood. You move back, move forth, and so on. Now, we have different types of saws. We have the rip saw, we have the cross cut saw, we have the tenon saw, we have the bow saw, dovetail saw, coping saw, fret saw, panel saw, and then we have the keyhole saw. That's a diagram of the saw. We have these different types of saw. And then the next one is plane. Now, planes are cutting tools used for reducing the thickness of wood. Okay, if you don't like the thickness of the wood, we use plane to reduce the thickness or shaping wood to a smooth and fine finish. Now, special types of planes can be used for cutting joints or moldings. Now, that's a typical example of a plane. We have different types of planes. We have the jack plane, we have the four plane, we have the smoothing plane, we have the trying plane, and we also have the spoke shave plane. That's a diagram of a plane. We have different types of plane that we use. Now, in summary, what have we discussed so far in this lesson? We have said that driving tools are used to drive in or out nails and other objects. Example, we talked about the hammers, we discussed screwdrivers, and then we also discussed the punches. These are all examples of driving tools that we use to either drive in nails or drive out nails. We also said 
that boring tools are used for marking holes in wood. And we have some examples. We talked about some examples of boring tools. We discussed the ratchet and the wheel brace. We talked about the bits, twist drills, bradal, and gimlets. And finally, we discussed the cutting tools, which we said are used to cut wood or used for cutting wood. Example of cutting tools that we discussed are the rip, the cross cuts, tenon, bow, dovetail, coping, fret, panel, and the keyhole saw. Now, let's move on to answer this simple question. Let's see if you can answer this simple question based on what we have studied so far. Now, the question is, which of these is not, take notes, which of these is not a driving tool? I'll take it again. Which of these, from the options listed below, is not a driving tool? The first option there is hammer. The next option is ratchet brace. The next option is screwdriver. And then the final option is punch. Let's take a minute to see if you can answer this simple question. Okay, so let's look at it once again. The question is, which of these is not a driving tool? And we have four options. We have the hammer, ratchet brace, screwdriver, and then the punch. The hammer is a driving tool. So that is not the answer. Ratchet brace is a boring tool. Screwdriver is a driving tool, so that is not the answer. Punch is also a driving tool, so that is not the answer. So the correct answer here is ratchet brace, because ratchet brace is a boring tool. Thank you very much for joining us in this lesson. Hope to see you again some other time. 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 Again some other time.